everybody, Wayne here. I've got a good friend of mine, Jeremy Beckham, who's um, one of the organizers at the Utah Animal Rights Coalition. And we've got the actor James Cromwell as well, the lead actor in the movie Babe. And more distressingly, we've also got some baby pigs who have been given to us by a whistleblower inside of a major factory farm. Um, the, the whistleblower has been sending us photos and video of just extreme cruelty inside these farms, saying that there has to be something done. Even I, as someone who has access to the inside of this, acknowledge that there's incredible cruelty to baby animals are being torn from their mothers and, and, and decimated by the hundreds of thousands in Utah factory farms. But what we're here today to do is, is not to show the public, show the people in the Capitol building behind us the cruelty that's happening in these factory farms, which is criminal animal cruelty. But today we also have a letter. Um, a letter supported by a veterinarian and a law professor, Shirsten Rosenberg and Justin Marceau. Justin Marceau was a lead counsel in the Ag Gag lawsuit against the state of Utah that successfully struck down the Ag Gag law as unconstitutional. Shirsten Rosenberg was on the board of directors of the Silicon Valley Humane Society. She's a veterinarian. They're both exper very experienced in their domains and they're supporting our letter asking the state of Utah to take action about on the, against the criminal animal cruelty occurring in Utah factory farms, including Smithfield Foods. We've obviously been inside Smithfield Foods many times. That's not where these piglets came from. But Smithfield Foods is a company that confines animals in gestation crates, these medieval torture devices where mother pigs are entombed in a metal cage their entire lives. They thrash, they scream, they can't even turn around and look their babies in the eye. And one of the reasons so many of the babies die is precisely because their mothers can't care for them because their mothers are separated by these cage bars. So we wanna show Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox, Governor Gary Herbert, the Attorney General of the state of Utah, this cruelty. And we have so many Utah citizens with us today asking for immediate action to be taken about the criminal animal cruelty and the public health risk posed by factory farms in the state. And all we're asking for them to do today is to start some sort of inquiry, to start an inquiry. Let's start looking at this. And we have concrete visual proof of extreme animal cruelty, of public health threats, like mass antibiotic usage, diseases like MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus that is killing the kids in the state of Utah, the infirm, the elderly in the state of Utah. This is not just an animal rights issue, this is a human rights issue. And so I and Jeremy and, and, and James will be inside the Capitol building just asking them to take some sort of action and begging and pleading them this holiday season, let's bring mothers and babies together. Let's not tear families apart. Let's have compassion this holiday season. And we've got hundreds of people behind us. So I don't know if, if, if James or Jeremy, you have anything else to add before we walk in? Sure. Um, so I've, I've been a Utah resident now for the past 25 years. I definitely consider it my home state and I probably will be my entire life. And uh, there's no question that the state of Utah, I think, in the time that I've been an animal advocate for the past 17 years, I've seen a lot of signs of enormous progress. Um, but there's also still a long way to go. And I think it's you know really reprehensible that um, our state cruelty to animal statutes provides this exemption for commonly accepted husbandry practices because mm -hmm. folks some of the most horrific abuses imaginable are commonly accepted right now in the animal agriculture industry mm -hmm. um, with baby piglets if they don't gain enough weight quickly because these animals entire value is, is, is placed or rested upon the amount of flesh on their bones if they don't gain weight fast enough it is commonly accepted practice at Circle 4 and other facilities to take these baby piglets and swing them over their head and slam their heads on the concrete ground, a practice that's called knocking or thumping, okay? Just because this is commonly accepted in the industry doesn't mean it should be morally accepted by society at large. It was once commonly accepted to have children go into coal mines and be worked to death but we had a moral reawakening as a society and said we need to reject this and stop placing profit above basic decency. And I think that needs to happen in animal agriculture as well. And I think this is a really inspiring sign that we have dozens or hundreds of people here today standing up and saying accepted in the industry doesn't mean it should be accepted in society. James, do you have anything that you'd like to say? You're holding this, um, this dead baby piglet in your hands. Well, if you ever saw the film Babe, this is the piglet that I held up and won because I guessed its weight and later became Babe. And if you love that story and you love what that story, the meaning of that story, you have to see that that's the opposite of what this is. This is pure, unadulterated cruelty and a disgrace. So we have to <clears throat> open our hearts, have compassion for this these creatures and all creatures, and so that this doesn't happen anymore. It should stop now. All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and walk in now.
Lewis, are you ready to go? Wow. Hi, everyone. If you're just tuning in, we're at the State Capitol building in Utah. It's right behind me over here. We're getting ready to walk inside. We have dead baby piglets from whistleblowers, and we're about to walk in with hundreds of people, and we're demanding that, um, we're asking politely uh, from, uh, that the Lieutenant Gov Governor Spencer J. Fox take action. Don't prosecute uh, animal rescuers, but rather come with us to these farms, come with us to the largest pig farm on the planet and help us prosecute criminal animal cruelty. And if you all could do that, if you all could sign the petition in the comments, and if you all could also uh, tag Lieutenant J, uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor Spencer J. Fox, that would be incredible. Wayne, we're walking inside of this, uh, the state capitol building in Utah right now. We have dead baby piglets with us. You're being charged in the state of Utah for, um, you know, with multiple felonies for rescuing baby Lily. Do you have any words? Are you scared? There's a police right in front of us. I, I am scared. I'm scared for the animals. I'm scared for the future of this planet. I'm not scared for myself because, you know, we have the right to be here. Uh, we have a First Amendment right to protest and exercise our speech with respect to our elected officials. And, and honestly, I'm not even here to say that much today. I'm here on behalf of the residents of Utah who are standing behind me, advocating not just for animal rights, but for their rights as well. The right to free speech it should not be a crime to take a photograph of animal cruelty. The right to raise their family safely it should not be a crime to educate the public about the fact that diseases and antibiotics in the pork industry are killing our kids and educating their kids and their, and their families about our conscience, about the fact that our values are being violated by this industry that tortures and abuses billions of animals every year. So we have some police ahead of us and um, looks like our, our marshals are gonna be speaking. Thank you all for tuning in. We're here with hundreds of people. And right here we have Utah residents who are asking uh, the state capitol building, specifically just a, Lieutenant just show people Governor Spencer Fox. We'll showdown at the police. Yeah, we can go this way though. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. So there's police here, but they're, they're escorting us into the, into the building. So we are gonna be able to exercise our First Amendment rights. And we're gonna walk into the capitol building with the governor, the lieutenant governor, the attorney general, and all the legislatures, legislators in the state of Utah are, are in this building. Their offices are here. So this is the seat of power. Um, Can we have some... Let's make sure Jeremy and Jamie stay near the front. Okay, so... so Jeremy and, and James, if you could just stay near the front. Um, All right, Lewis. folks, we're walking inside of the state capitol building with hundreds of people. And all of these people over here, right here that you're seeing, are Utah residents. And we have, we have several dead baby piglets here with us. And we're, we're here to show... We're here to show the state. We are here to show the state. Their demonstration. Um, Wait, get closer. Yeah, he'll keep it in his hand. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. So we have actor James Cromwell here with us carrying a baby pig who has suffered his entire life. They're often thumped on the ground, as Jeremy said. 18% uh, of baby pigs die in the first few weeks because they suffer from so much neglect. And we're here today to show the people of Utah. They, they told us we weren't restricted to that area. Okay, okay thank you. I think that's in the permit. Yeah. That we weren't restricted. Okay, so we're going to go up these stairs. Thank you, sir. Wait. Yes. That's hey, folks, we are walking to the... State, we're walking inside the state capitol building and, and uh, deceased we're trying to go to the governor's building and governor's room to ask them if they can help us prosecute criminal animal cruelty help us prosecute. So we're just going to go and um, present a letter. What's happening to these dying these baby piglets were thumped and we'll be very civil. No, just no because they're small. And folks, if you can, please okay? share this video. Okay. I'm Thank on my you, way to Thank the governor's you. office um, inside the state capitol building right now. And let's hear it. So, the police so guys, if we could try to, to make sure Jeremy and, and James are near the front. And then also the, you know, all the folks from Utah on the front as well. Thank you, sir. This way. 
Do we have Jeremy here too? I'm right here, sorry. No worries. So we're being redirected a little bit. This so is, wait, this is, this actually is the first a, time someone's done this. Someone's brought, you know, baby piglets who have been killed by one of the farms in Utah. We're here with them. But we want to show people the vivid, grim reality. And I think even the political officers and the political officials in the city of Utah, which is a farm state, when we're confronted with the reality of this industry, it's hard to deny that this is inhumane. This is, this is not compassionate. This is extreme and grotesque violence. And folks, this baby piglet, like many of the baby piglets that are killed inside of Smithfield Foods Farms, was probably slammed to the floor for simply being born a piglet who was too small and wasn't going to grow. And that's so awful because these animals have, you know, individual, individual, individual personalities. They have the right to live. And one of the other reasons that we're here today with hundreds of people is because we want to give consumers the right to know. So if you want to help us address this criminal animal cruelty, please tag Governor Lieutenant Spencer J. Fox and ask him to I think this is the wrong door. animal cruelty, not animal rescuers. We're trying to give the public the right to know. We're trying to help these animals that James is holding right here. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm here with actor James Cromwell, who's holding a dead baby piglet from uh, from a massive pig farm. Um, and what we're here to do is to ask the Lieutenant Governor Spencer Fa uh, Cox to please address this criminal animal cruelty and to drop the charges against animal rescuers. And you can help us do that. You can help us by sharing this video. You can help us by tagging Lieutenant uh, Governor Spencer Cox for for um, you know asking to, to address this criminal animal cruelty. Wayne, what's going on? So we're just knocking on the door. Can we have Hi there. We're just here to present a letter. Jeremy, do you want to come to the front? Sure. And James, do you want to come up to the front as well? So the door has been locked, and this is not yeah. usual, right, Jeremy? Jeremy? Um, it's hard to say. <laughs> no, they just but locked it. Yeah, they, they just, just locked it. We just heard them okay. lock it. Uh, we're just here to present a letter, ma'am. There are many residents of, of Utah and myself here to present a letter. We don't have to all come in, even if just like a few of us could come in. Would that be okay? Just to present a letter. I, I think your office is open right now. Yeah, business hours are now. Yeah. As the chief law enforcement official in the state of Utah, we'd like to present evidence of cruelty to animals under Utah's criminal statute at Circle Four Farms. Ma'am? Okay, so just so all of you know, um, when we approach the Attorney General's, you can all come in so everyone can hear. You can come closer. We were just gonna drop a letter off, but the, they blocked the door and are not letting us present our letter. We you can walk over to the governor's office. office. Governor's office just across the hall. Okay. Let's try the governor's office. Let's go to the governor's okay, office. Sorry, can, we have, can we have some of the people with the piglets kind of next to me? So we can always have the office of the Utah Attorney General has locked. Hey everyone, we were just at the Utah Attorney General's office and they did shut the door. Uh, we have hundreds of people here, including several Utah residents who are simply asking for, uh, you know, the government to take action against criminal animal cruelty. And what's happening right now across the world, but really in the state of Utah, is that animal rescuers are being charged with multiple felonies when there's horrific criminal animal cruelty happening. When we have baby piglets who are slammed to the ground, like the one Cassie's holding over here. Cassie, do you have any thoughts as we walk to the uh, governor's office? You're holding this piglet. I don't know if you all can see there, but she's got a huge dent in her head and in her neck where you can see is probably where she hit the cement when she slammed down because these pigs, when they're runts, when they're too little and they know they're going to starve to death or be trampled to death, the industry doesn't want to wait on that to happen, so they come through and they'll just kill them themselves by taking them and slamming them to the ground and throwing them out in a dumpster. And a whistleblower brought us these piglets from okay, so from a farm, from the industry, being killed simply for the crime of being born small, 
for the crime of being born a small piglet, but she is just a baby. She's so little, you can still see her umbilical cord crusted and bloody and dirty dangling from her body, and that's how young this baby is. But in this, she has no compassion for animals who are small, who are going to starve to death, who are going to freeze to death, and they come through and just kill them. And these are the animals that we're bringing here today to expose this criminal animal cruelty. Make sure you're not blocking Jake's shot. Wayne, do you have any? There's some police officers at the governor's door. We're about to arrive there. We have the letter with us, and we're going to be just asking them if we can have a conversation about the criminal animal cruelty that's occurring in Utah factory farms. So. Hi there, sir. How are you? Uh, we're not, we're not going to cause any problems at all, but my name's Wayne. It's very nice to meet both of you. We, we have a letter for the governor and lieutenant governor of the state of Utah. And our concern is the criminal animal cruelty that's happening in Utah factory farms. In particular, we have opinions from a licensed veterinarian who's on the board of directors of the Silicon Valley Humane Society. Also a law professor, Justin Marceau, who is the lead counsel and the challenge to the state's ad gag law, successfully striking it down as unconstitutional. Both of them have reviewed materials and findings from whistleblowers in Utah factory farms and have a concern about criminal violations of law undertaken by major corporations like Smithfield Foods. And we thought the governor and lieutenant governor, and we have dozens of residents of Utah, many, many residents of Utah here with us. Um, Jeremy, behind me, is a longtime resident of Utah who has a similar concern. We also have an actor, James Cromwell. Hi, sir. Hi, How are Mike you? Mike Mauer. I'm Governor Herbert's yes. deputy chief oh, of wonderful. staff. Thank you so much for meeting with us. Glad I really you appreciate, so. appreciate you coming up here today. Yeah, but my name's Wayne. I'm a uh, lawyer and former law professor. This is James Cromwell, Hi, He's, nice uh, an actor, to you lead here. actor yeah. in the film Babe. Uh -huh. And we have dozens of residents of Utah with us okay. here today as well. And we have a letter for the governor and lieutenant governor Great. about our concerns about criminal animal cruelty happening in Utah factory farms, in particular at a farm called Smithfield Foods, which is a major Chinese-owned company okay. um, that has been financed by the Chinese government that has a record of human rights abuses, including human trafficking, endangering the food supply, poisoning our kids, not just in Utah, but in my state of California as well. But it's all coming from this major factory farm in southern Utah, where they're giving the animals drugs, the animals are sick. Of Utah Criminal Code Section 769301, and also to drop the charges against investigators who blow the whistle on this misconduct because our kids deserve better, our communities deserve better, and the animals deserve better. So is there someone we could talk to, uh, the governor and the lieutenant I, governor? I'm probably the one, both the okay. governor and the lieutenant governor are off the hill right now, so I'm who's here. Okay, so great. Thank you so if much, you want sir. to visit for a few minutes, I'm fine if there's some other issues. of you from of that same image from the top. Um, all of these practices are abnormal practices. We have veterinarians, including industry vets. Um, Ian Duncan, a professor of animal welfare at the University of Guelph, has said these gestation and farrowing crates are the cruelest form of torment humankind has ever invented. And right. even the company itself has committed to not using these crates. But our investigation found they are still using these crates. Despite when did you do your investigation public. last year? It was in January 2017, but there have been subsequent investigations of Smithfield Foods Farms in early 2018 by activists in North Carolina. Okay. Smithfield Foods continues to use these gestation crates, which the public doesn't support, mm -hmm. which is a danger to human welfare and human health, mm -hmm. and which is extraordinarily cruel to animals, mm -hmm. which leads to babies like this starving to death and drowning in their own mother's feces okay. because their moms are trapped 
And in the holiday season, I know uh, people in Utah, Mormons believe a lot in family. We believe mothers and their children should not be separated. Mm -hmm. We believe kids should not be endangered by eating dangerous and poisonous food. In the holiday season, we're just asking the governor and lieutenant governor to take some sort of inquiry or action to investigate these, these abusive facilities. So things like this no longer happen to baby pigs, no longer happen to our kids either. Because I'm, I'm afraid for my nieces. When they're eating food like this, it scares me. So I don't know if James or Jeremy, you have anything you wanted to say? Did you ever see the film, Babe? Yeah, delightful film. Yeah. You know what it's, it's about recognizing the sensitivity mm -hmm. of the awareness of this animal mm -hmm. at just about the same as when I, I got the pig. Yeah. And it's a story about the pig going after its destiny. Yeah. And we're all moved by that. Mm -hmm. And yet we condemn millions of these to the cruelest possible existence, mm -hmm. both their birth and their death. So you don't have to be an expert. What you have to do is you have to feel in your heart. Mm -hmm. You have to have compassion. That's what I hope you would convey to the oh, governor and the lieutenant governor. Sure, yeah. This yeah. isn't really, it's not a question of law. The laws are on our side. Mm -hmm. It's a question of heart. Do you have the heart and compassion to see this creature as something mm -hmm. viable in this world, mm -hmm. like any other sentient being? Mm -hmm. Because if we don't deal with this appropriately, we're not going to deal with each other appropriately. Well, thank you for coming to Utah and, and sharing your message today. We appreciate uh, uh, you know, receiving this information. I will pass that along. Can I just say, too, um, my sure. name is Jeremy Beckham. I've lived Mike Mauer. It's an honor to meet you. I I've lived in Utah for uh, over 25 years. Um, I truly am proud to call this state my home. I think it's a beautiful state. I know it's filled with compassionate people. As you know, Utah has one of the highest rates of volunteer and service activity in the country, and I think that that's because people in Utah have really big hearts and care a lot. Yeah, and I think the reality is that still a lot of people just don't know that this kind of cruelty is happening on our farms. Mm -hmm. And I think that if, if we really examined what's happening and looked in our hearts, we would know it's wrong and we'd take some kind of action. And so I'm hoping that the state of Utah and the people of Utah will will step up and, 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 and realize a vision of a kinder, more compassionate future. And I think that can happen. Well, thank you. Anyone else wanted to share any comments briefly? We really appreciate you listening to us. Oh, glad Seriously, to do so. You're no, so glad to do kind so. I, again, I'm, humble and I really uh, appreciate it. Uh, not directly familiar with these issues, but I can promise I'll pass it on to the governor and lieutenant governor later today when they're back here in the capital. So Great. thanks for Great. thanks for coming. Is this the letter you want me to take? Yeah, this is the letter we're hoping you could take. Okay. And I will there are statements from with them. a licensed veterinarian and a law professor who are experts in criminal law. Okay. Um, and, and they're sharing their perspective too as, as people who are not necessarily animal rights activists, just as objective mm -hmm. observers of the situation. Well, I would like to uh, ask, I know some of my friends are being, um, you know, charged with mm -hmm. so many felonies and it scares me as, 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 you know, their friend and all they did was give the public the right to know. And I just wanted to ask you and I wanted to ask the state of, you know, the, the state capitol building, if people think it's okay for activists, for whistleblowers to be charged with 60 years in prison for saving animals for trying to help animals like this? To be honest, I'm not specifically familiar with the, the statute of the case, so yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I hesitate to comment on that. So. But even like, yeah. would you would you support um, people being charged with 60 years in prison for helping a dying animal? And, and that again, I can't comp, uh, comment on any of that. But uh, just like morally, not on the case. Uh, even morally, without knowing the full cases, without knowing how the, the conversation would be conveyed, okay. what I can do is say I appreciate you've got a First Amendment right to be here. Yep. We totally respect that. Thank uh, you. Thank we you. appreciate all of you coming up and in a very you know respectful manner sharing this important message. Yep. I promise, Thank you. Thank uh, you. as the governor's deputy chief of staff, I'll share this with the governor and with the lieutenant governor, with others on his staff, as appropriate they can you know, review, uh, you know, yeah. some of the issues that you've raised here today. Yeah, so. thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much for I'm, coming up here today. And I'm actually one of the people who's been charged by the Attorney General okay. for what I see as whistleblowing activity. Mm -hmm. When I told the Attorney General, Janice is a wonderful woman. She's, mm -hmm. she's a good heart. I don't know, do you know Janice? The Deputy don't. Attorney General. Okay. She's I'm the one sure who's prosecuting Okay. She's, okay. she's wonderful. She's a good-hearted woman, and I think she thinks she's doing this because she has to enforce the laws mm -hmm. of the state of Utah, and she thinks that we're outsiders coming in to cause problems. And what I've told Janice, because she is a kind-hearted woman, mm -hmm. she's Mormon, she's a person of faith, as mm -hmm. I am, that we did this because we care about the people of Utah. We don't want the kids of Utah to get sick. <clears throat> and it's, it's scary to me when there are 30,000 kids dying every year of MRSA, mm -hmm. and all this bacteria is being bred in factory farms like Smithfield, when the company is concealing the fact that these diseases are happening in their farm, concealing the fact they're using Carbidox, which is a carcinogenic antibiotic the FDA is trying to ban. It's dangerous at all levels. It's giving our kids cancer. You know, 
we're doing this because we believe the citizens of Utah have the right to know these things and make an informed choice. Because if they can't make an informed choice, our democracy is going to fall into dysfunction. Okay. And, and our society will fall into dysfunction. Thanks, Do you Wayne. think we need to? We need to get Chief Myler back to the meeting. Okay. 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 Thank I, thanks, so thanks for coming sir. up. No, Appreciate you receiving thank this you. information. And yeah. I, I promise I'll convey it on to uh, okay. the governor and lieutenant governor later okay. today. And is it okay if some of the residents of Utah, I mean, I know I'm a citizen, uh -huh. if they follow up with you and maybe schedule a meeting about some of these things? Sure. Would that be possible? Yeah, uh, Absolutely. Did I bring a card or is it out in the meeting? Um, anyway, just ask for, I've been out and about, I've got everybody else's card in <laughs> line. Um, just ask feeling. for Mike Mauer. Mike Mauer. Yeah, we'll okay. circle back in, yeah, in and yeah, give us some time and okay. I'll, uh, we'll forward this along. Okay. And, Thank and you for giving us an opportunity. Yeah, to be glad right. to do so. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for being so nice and respectful today. Yeah, and we apologize for any disruption and I, and I apologize to, to you or mm -hmm. anyone else in the government of Utah for anything that I've done that is perceived as a violation of laws or a yes. violation of norms in this country. Yeah. In this and again, that's something yeah. I can't comment on, having heard this long side of your story. You know, of course. Reach, no, reach out to Smithville, find out kind of what their response is. Of course. But again, no, I understand. <clears throat> I appreciate everyone uh, coming up here today and okay. sharing your opinions with the governor. Okay. Thanks so Thank much. You, Have a great so day. Thank you. Thank Take you. care, sir. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So I guess, Louis, what are we doing next? Yeah, so now we have, uh, some people are going to say some words, so if we can just head back into that kind of main area, just pass this area. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm here with um, uh, hundreds of other people. We are at the state capitol building in Utah, and we just went to the state uh, attorney general's office and also the governor's office. We're asking you all to tag Governor Lieutenant Spencer J. Uh, Cox, and we're asking that he help us address this criminal animal cruelty. There's so much suffering inside of these places. If you look at this baby piglet, she was slammed to the ground, and she she didn't have a chance at life. And instead of helping people rescue animals like her, give animals like her the, the lives that they deserve, this state and the government is prosecuting activists. So we're here with hundreds of people asking them to address this criminal animal cruelty. And um, we did just speak to one of the officials here in the building. And, um, and you know, it's, it's just been incredibly, uh, you know, it's just been incredibly difficult to try to get a response. But we did get some sort of a response today, right, Wayne? We did get a response, and the chief of staff, or the deputy chief of staff of the governor, all said that they'd agreed to meet with us, and, and I hope that they do meet with the residents of Utah who have a profound and heartfelt concern about cruelty to animals, public safety, public health, that, it, that has been compromised. Uh, let, let Jamie go first. Do you want to just uh, say, your, say your piece? You could get up on these steps. Okay. So I'll say something first. I want to take this coat off first. If camera people could try to stay down here after you get a couple shots, that would be helpful. Okay. I'll do a Yeah, I think that's much better for everybody. Wait. Please. Yeah. yeah, thank you. That was a good idea. So, folks, we are here at the State Capitol building in Utah. We have um, dead piglets with us. These Poor baby piglets were slammed to the ground because they were too small and whistleblowers provided us with these deceased bodies and we're here at the state capitol building because we want the governor the state attorney the attorney general to address this criminal animal cruelty and take a stance against what's happening to these innocent animals instead of uh, prosecuting activists and whistleblowers we're simply trying to give public the right to know folks Officers who are here today, everyone on Facebook Live, we're here to ask a very simple question and a very innocent question. Why is our nation, why is the state, why is our community in the business of killing? The evidence of this killing is here behind us. The whistleblower inside a major factory farm has been delivering us photos, video, and even now physical evidence of extreme animal cruelty. These baby animals from the day they're born are torn from their mothers or confined in metal tombs called gestation or fairing crates. These tombs are so small, the mothers cannot even turn around and touch their babies with their face. They can't turn around and look at their babies with their own eyes. And I've been inside these facilities. I've seen what happens to these poor baby animals because of the cruelty in these factory farms. The sick and the small ones are starving to death. They look up at us pleading, begging for us to do something for them because they cannot reach food and their moms cannot help them. 
Industry statistics show that 18% of these babies die of horrible, horrible maladies like starvation, pneumonia, and even being crushed to death. 250,000 babies are thrown away at Smithfield Foods in southern Utah every year simply because they're too small and too sick to matter to the industry. Every one of these individual animals is just like a puppy. Imagine someone taking a baby dog, a puppy or a kitten, starving them to death for weeks and then throwing them away when they were still alive in a garbage can. This is what is happening to 250,000 sensitive, sensitive, beautiful, innocent creatures every year at Smithfield Foods, but it can stop. And we believe you and the public, you and the government of Utah, officers here in this state, no one wants to see these animals brutalized. No one wants to see mothers torn from their children. No one wants to see antibiotics and disease filling our kids' food and making our kids sick. And I know this company. Smithfield Foods is a company owned by the Chinese government, which has a long record of both human rights and animal rights abuses. Our food system, our nation, our government should not be controlled by the Chinese government. And that is what is happening to us today. So we're asking you, please join us in getting out of the business of killing. And that is what it is. It is a business. And let us build a community of caring. We don't have to hurt anyone. We don't have to bully anyone. We don't have to savagely brutalize human beings or animals. We can treat everyone with compassion and care. That is a simple ask, a simple demand. It is one the public supports. And we're asking the governor of Utah, the lieutenant governor of Utah, and the attorney general to work with us in giving every single one of these little babies the care that she deserves. given no name, but they were loved by their mother. You can see a dent in their heads and their necks where they're slammed to the ground. Because if they're not going to starve to death quickly enough, then the industry wants to kill them and throw them away. This is Bo, and they deserve better than this, and their brothers and sisters deserve our help. She's here to say, I never even had a chance. Please, help. He or she is an individual, not an object, not a resource to be thrown away. This baby piglet has siblings that all they want to do is run around and play with. They deserve that. They deserve the warmth of the sun and the comfort of grass. But they died before they ever got the chance. They died in agony, but their suffering is over. We are their voices. Your life and death shows that compassion is a universal concept. Every being deserves to live in dignity. Sam was just a baby when their neck was broken. And Sad to say that we're standing around with these babies, and we need to all remember that all the victims in this industry died as children. Wow. Um, this is just so moving, I don't even know where to begin, right? Um, I want to actually, I mean, there, there's a lot of darkness and suffering and cruelty in the world, as we've all seen on full display here today. But I want to talk for just a few minutes about a little bit of optimism and some signs of hope that I think that I have seen um, and the potential for all of us as a society to do better and realize a more compassionate future I think really is there. We really can have a moral awakening as a society. We all know that we can have moral awakenings as individuals, right? I think very few of us in this room were born vegan or born thinking about these issues the way we think about them now. I myself used to be a hunter and fisher. I've killed animals with my own hands. And uh, you know, eventually I started to reflect on my own behavior and I recognized that these animals are just like us in all the ways that matter. They feel pain, they suffer, they have emotional lives, they experience the world much the way we do. And just as I had a dog or a cat that I considered a family member at home, these animals matter just as much. And I think more and more people are starting to wake up to that. Um, I've lived in Utah for the past 25 years. 
I've been an animal advocate for about 17, 18 years. And during that time, honestly, I've seen enormous progress and change already. I think sometimes when we're living in a society and things are slowly and gradually changing, we don't even recognize necessarily all the ways that things are improving around us. But I thought about it this morning um, and all the different small ways that things have changed. Let's talk about the fact that just a few blocks south of here on the corner of State Street and South Temple, for many, many years, going back decades, there was a business called LeBlanc Fur, and they were a retailer that sold fur coats. And we used to protest every single week, animal advocates, against this fur store, until about five or six years ago, they finally closed their doors for good. The market demand for the skins of animals was just drying up. And now, Salt Lake City has no retailer that sells primarily fur products, which is just amazing. Despite our chilly climate, there's no market for it here. People are turning away from this. Also, just down the street at Temple Square and at Memory Grove, where we were all rallying earlier today, it used to be commonplace to see horses pulling carriages of tourists all the time. We had dozens of horse-drawn carriages in Salt Lake City. They were an institution. The city would set up markers for them for where the slack line could set up. But eventually, people organized and agitated. There was a tragic incident with a horse named Jerry who collapsed and died. People organized, agitated, and elected officials recognized that living a nose-to-tail pipe um, existence for these majestic creatures was not humane and they banned the practice and now that's gone. I've also seen a cultural sea change with how people get their companion animals. It used to be very common for people to purchase animal from a breeder or from a pet store. Now I hear all over on billboards, advertisements, just in the broader culture, the need to adopt animals from shelters to try to, and, and spay and neuter to try to solve this animal overpopulation crisis. And elected officials responded again. I'm not sure how many of you heard, but just two weeks ago, Salt Lake City banned the sale of dogs and cats in retail establishments. And also the growth of vegan eating. 17 years ago, there were two restaurants, two, that were all vegan in Salt Lake County, and now there are 14. Again, that's responding to something that's happening, something that's changing among all of us. So while there's a moral awakening that happening, happens with each one of us on an individual level, there's also a broader moral awakening that's happening in society. We just need to keep the issue alive, we need to keep on pushing, and we will reach the, we will get there. We will realize animal liberation. We just have to keep on pushing. Thank you. Activists are in the state capitol building right now. Utah, Salt Lake City. Reporting live for John and Shannon. So, uh, I could throw. Okay. We all know what this is. This is the corpse of a living creature, someone's baby, a sentient being like us with thoughts and feelings and a destiny. And it's taken from millions of animals every year in the name of our, that we can't possibly live without eating meat. It's not possible. I can't do it. I can't become a vegan. I can't take responsibility for this industry. I can't take responsibility for this planet. And what it represents to the people who did this is just money in some corporation's profit in their pocket. Unfortunately, I have a little different view. I agree that we are making steps forward, that you're all here is a wonderful step forward, that there are so many law officers here and no governor and no lieutenant governor means, unfortunately, that your voice in this building does not count. What counts is your vote. Your elected officials are supposed to represent you. They're supposed to listen to you. They're not supposed to say, I have no knowledge of the facts of this case. No, take a moral position. No, I cannot even take a moral position. I'm sorry, that's not good enough. All of us know what the moral position is. The moral position is to resist this and to end it. If you want to end it, the only power that they listen to is the power of the vote. Organize. Make this an issue. You'd be surprised how many people who vote another way or vote unconsciously, if you present them with the evidence, with the letter that Wayne presented, if they see this, if they see the videos about what happens in there, because of people like Wayne, they will change their minds and they will ask their representative when they go to vote, 
What do you think about this? What will you do about this? Then something will happen. Then there will be a law. Organize, resist, persist. Bless your hearts. Okay, so now we're gonna walk to the, the front of the Capitol building and just do a little ceremony before we depart. And, and all of you know on live that we're not just stopping here, we're taking this evidence of cruelty to the heart of Big Ag, to Circle Four Farms, the Smithfield Farm, where so many piglets have died, so many mother pigs, piglets have been brutalized. And we have hundreds of people here with us, residents of Utah, citizens of Utah, who have a genuine heartfelt concern about the cruelty to animals and the cruelty to human beings being subjected on the world by factory farming. And we hope all of you will join us. And we hope, we hope and we pray that the governor of Utah, Lieutenant Governor, the Chief of Staff, will listen to this cry and will meet with Jeremy and the other residents of Utah. I'm not a citizen of Utah myself. I understand I'm perceived as an outsider. But the actions we've taken, we've taken in the interest of the people of Utah, like Jeremy, and frankly, even the farmers. Because the farmers of this world, if our planet dies, if our kids are sick, they're not well served either. Okay, so you're all ready to do that? Let's yeah. go out and have a little ceremony. Lewis, you want to lead us? Yeah. All right, everyone. We just finished a really heartwarming and, you know, just a very um, heart some touching um, speeches by activists who are holding dead baby piglets, dead baby piglets that were provided to, to us by um, whistleblowers. And the reason that we're here today uh, with these piglets these is to, one, to give the public the right to know. The public deserves to know if animal, baby animals are tortured, starved, and beaten to death. The public deserves to know that. The citizens of Utah deserve to know that. And I can tell you that the reason companies like Smithfield prosecute activists is not because they care about the value of quote unquote stolen piglets. They care because they don't want this violence exposed. If people know that these baby piglets are being smashed. You can see the smash imprint too. You can see this entire dent in her head that goes in completely. Oh my God, that's terrible. And you can see her umbilical cord too is still connected because that's how young she is. She's got an umbilical cord still connected that's crusty and bloody because she is just taken from her mother and thrown to the ground and killed possibly right in front of her mother as her mother watched. And that's the agony that mother pigs go through in farms like Smithfield Farms where they're trapped and confined on all sides by crates as their babies are born into feces and into blood because that's all that surrounds them. And then they're forced to watch their babies die or be killed when they're not when they're not big enough to make it to the slaughter weight, when all that the industry sees is money and profit and they don't see this baby for who she is, which is a baby, just a little girl. And James Cromwell just said, we know who they are because these are somebody's baby. And that just forces me to think about the mothers too who are still there. This little girl's mother is still in a farm somewhere, losing more and more babies because that's what they go through repeatedly. And that's why we have to go right back to these farms, which is what we're doing today to sing songs to them, to bear witness to them, and to demand that action be taken, not just in, in city halls and in capitol buildings in the state of Utah, also on the streets, in the public, even in the heart of Big Ag, even in Beaver County where we're going, where it's completely farm country, and we don't know if someone will come and attack us when we're there with our message, but in Utah so far while being here, I've seen so much overwhelming support, and Someone who, who drove us here today, Priya, to the Capitol building said he cuddled a cow and that was it. And he couldn't eat, eat animals anymore. And that's exactly the, the change that can happen for everyone here, even in Beaver County. And that's why we're bringing compassion to the heart of Big Ag. We're going to Circle Four Farms where animals like this little baby are dying and being killed by the thousands, filling up dumpsters. And we're going to go bear witness to them and ask, hey, if yesterday a huge turkey farm could release 100 individuals to us in an act of compassion to go to sanctuaries to not have this fate but to be loved and be treated like the individuals they are then why can't Smithfield do the same then why can't every farm and every slaughterhouse where we are documenting criminal animal abuse embrace the truth that we're exposing recognize the compassion that's possible and help us make it happen they need to have people with piglets stand in front of their head or else their visuals are not very good at all.
All right, folks, there's hundreds of people over here at the State Capitol building in Utah, and we are here for a simple, simple, simple question. Uh, why is, you know, why is this attorney general prosecuting activists and not the people who are uh, subjecting these animals, these poor baby animals, to horrific uh, abuse? And, um, you know, just if you can help us by uh, tagging Lieutenant J. Spencer, uh, Spencer J. Cox and asking him so to prosecute animal cruelty now. and not we're animal rescue. So that would be incredible. So I'm um, just going to show you some of these baby piglets and and that was. I thought that was extremely And powerful. you know what um, happened to this baby piglet was probably that she yeah, was born. She probably point. was you know not um, by her mother for too long, and then she was smashed to the ground because she was too small. Experience. And you can see their little paws, I mean their little hooves. They're so tiny. They don't even know what it's like to live a life without. You know they don't. They had no. They don't know what life is like. They were born into slavery essentially, and these poor animals. They have blood all over them. They're so tiny. And if this was happening to puppies, the world would be outraged. But instead, people are you know happily eating bacon during the holiday season, and and they don't know what's happening. And I I believe, and I think most of us over here believe that if people had any idea, if the citizens of Utah had any idea that this is the face. Of, of their holiday meal, of their of their bacon, that they would not support this. And that's why companies like Smithfield are going out of their way to charge people, uh, charge whistleblowers with criminal animal cruelty. And that's just not right. James, do you have any any comments after that, uh, you know, that meeting that we had with the, with one of the officials up there? Well, at least somebody came out. Yes. What message he will take back to the governor, who of course depends on the donations that come from Smithfield yeah. to get elected. And so he follows the uh, whims of his donors. Uh, having done this many, many times, that's called shotgunning. That basically is to just put you off and to not. So if people know what the interface is between the people and the people who represent us, this power, this building, you can see that what it is is just give me the facts. I don't know anything, uh, and I'll I'll take care of it. Not. So, uh, but this is a when you when you have ten thousand people standing out here, <laughs> it'll be a little different. Yeah, that's why we need all of you to come out here Correct. next time for animal liberation con convergence for the conference and all these events that are happening. Again, if you're just tuning in, we're at the state capitol building in Utah, and we're. Uh, simply asking you all uh, and we're asking the Lieutenant Governor Spencer J. Cox to uh, prosecute animal cruelty, not animal rescuers. And I'm standing here with people who are holding um, ba dead baby piglets who were provided to us by whistleblowers from a massive pig farm. And, um, you know, one of the things that I want people to know is that I have, you know, we, we met this official inside of the, the Capitol building and I have interviewed with Cassie actually around 60 people um, just 60 residents, probably meat eaters, and we asked them, hey, what do you think about activists and whistleblowers facing uh, 60 years in prison for rescuing animals? And every single one said no. And I think that if we had asked that, that official in, in his capacity as, a hu as just a person, as a citizen of Utah, he would have said, no, I don't think that's, that's morally okay. But you know, the reason he said, I don't know, I can't comment on this case, is because of what James said. There's so much money in, in this industry that Smithfield has so much money that they can literally buy out the whole planet. But they're not gonna, they're not gonna be able to do that anymore if we have thousands of people standing out over. I just opened up this towel a little bit more and I just wanna show you something because there's another tail on her body and it's not her tail, but they cut off the tails and they cut off parts of these piglets without any anesthesia and that's just standard practice in an industry that moves quickly and keeps these animals so closely confined that they'll get chewed off or ripped off in the metal anyways she has someone else's tail on her and she's let me just show people that so that's somebody else's tail because these animals are, are treated like products and and you know they're treated as if they're just trash so who cares if there's just another tail on they're her just body body parts to them they're not the individuals inside of them 
And Cassie, you've you know you've been you've nursed the some of some piglets back to health, and you know how playful and gentle and and loving that they can be. And how does it feel to hold a baby piglet who's never gonna have a chance at life? It feels really hopeless, but I do have hope from everyone here. I have hope from those memories where I have helped baby piglets who I helped rescue from Smithfield Farms, who I took you know, into a car and drove them to a sanctuary and took them to safety and fed them and made sure that they were eating because at first they were too scared to because they have no experience with that. They, they're deprived of their mothers so early on that they don't really understand natural things like nursing yet. And, and when they do try to nurse, they're drinking blood because their mothers have gone through so many pregnancies and their nipples are so chafed that they're drinking blood. And we showed that to the officials here today and we showed them pictures pictures of chafed bloody nipples and uh, I saw people also from the police and the officials looking at the babies we were holding and I think that they recognize the same thing that we do that this is a baby I hope that they saw that just like James said that this is a baby this is somebody's baby and I'm thinking about the mothers that I've still seen inside of Smithfield I'm thinking about the mothers who who know they're their babies and don't get to treat them that way and don't get to even spend time with them or keep them clean or keep them safe before they're thrown against the ground to be killed and then thrown Feel in a dumpster with other time. animals and other body parts that have just been discarded. Thanks, Cassie. Wayne, do you want to say a few closing words? Um, yeah, we're, we're we're gonna take these stories back to Circle Four now, to the place where this all began. So this little girl is not gonna be forgotten today. We're gonna to go back to where she's from, where her mom made. Um, and the moms of pigs, just like her mom, are, are trapped. All right, thank you all so much. Uh, we are going thank back you. to Circle Four Farm. So even though I'm ending this live stream, we're gonna be starting over again. Uh, the trip to Beaver County is about four four hours. So please uh, look out for another live stream and please share this live stream if you haven't already. Please comment that you're sharing. We need you to spread these stories. We need you if we want the public to have the right to know what's going on. We want the public to see the citizens of Utah, the citizens of the United States and citizens of this planet to see what's happening uh, inside of pig farms around the world. So we want you to share this live stream and to show people what's happening behind closed doors. And if you wanna help the animal rescuers who are being charged with up and facing 60 years in prison you can simply do that by sharing uh, um, sharing this live stream and also uh, sharing the petition commenting uh, signing the petition that's being commented in the links below and thank you all for being part of this really really you know saddening somber ceremony where we uh, took these baby piglets to the state capitol building these deceased piglets from massive pig farm to address to ask the governor governor lieutenant to address what's a criminal animal cruelty. Thank you all for joining. We'll be tuning back in on the DXC page very shortly. Thanks, thanks again, and please again share this video.